Peter Parker and Stark Industries number five, The Field Trip by Angelidine Latin. Again, I do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's hard to say. Roger Harrington had been arranging a field trip for the academic decathlon team for a while now. Somehow all their trips ended in disaster. So he wanted this year's field trip to be the best. As such, he emailed a message to Stark Industries for a spot on their tour week. Subject, tour group for the academic decathlon team from Mary Royal at maryroyal.us to Roger Harrington, rogerharrington.us. Good afternoon, Mr. Harrington. This is Mary Royal, the intern head of the HR department of Stark Industries. I am emailing you to inform you that your request for a tour in Stark Industries has been approved. Attached here is the tentative schedule of, event, of events, date and time, and other relevant information you will need to send within the week. To confirm, please reply in the next 24 hours. Thank you and have a good day. Attached link. Opening his email and seeing the message, Roger jumps up in joy, surprising the surrounding teachers of the faculty rooms. Sheepishly rubbing his neck, he sits down and types a reply. This was going to be a good field trip. Hopefully. Meanwhile, in SI, all the intern heads were currently in a meeting Hell Week started in two days and they needed to iron out all the details. Since SI announced the changes after the Civil War fiasco, they introduced Hell Week. To make sure that the security of Stark Industries would not be compromised, HI decided to reserve a week for every four months dedicated to tour groups and other events involving outsiders. This way, SI would only need to open up security for a week every four months instead of regularly. It worked for the company. There weren't any incidents like last year. However, for the interns, the week quickly became known as Hell Week. All interns were going on a cycle through various tasks required, like the touring, Q&A, arranging, etc. As such, they were all miserable. Currently, they were in a meeting room alpha discussing what to do before the first day. In the centre of it all, Tony Stark sits in the middle of a long table. All participants in the meeting are staring at the projected screen of a Stark phone and a specific email. Locking eyes with each other, they let out identical cackles. They had heard Peter was being bullied at school by some kid who was too much of a goody two-shoes to do anything about it. He, obviously, didn't plan to do anything about it at all. They concluded that they were going to have to do it themselves. That's why they decided to dedicate the first day to Midtown High. Normally, Hell Week was a pain in the ass, But this? Oh, this was going to be good. Tick. 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 Covering his ears, Peter glared at that bastard of a digital clock. For the past few minutes, he'd been hearing the damn thing tick, tick, ticking away, and it was starting to get on his nerves. Right now, he had class with Miss Warren, who, though was unusually sort of interesting, was currently droning on and on and on on a, quite frankly, easy topic. Read, it wasn't an easy topic. But everyone didn't know what the hell was going on. Peter was just too oblivious to notice. He was bored out of his mind. So bored, in fact, that he started stealthily drawing a caricature of his teacher. It was supposed to be a lifelike drawing, but alas, Peter was not destined to be the next Leonardo da Vinci. Thus, he decided on settling with calling it a caricature. It looked nothing like Ms. Warren. While he was drawing his caricature, he failed to notice MJ was looking over his shoulder. MJ, the resident artist, was wondering what Peter was so engrossed in. Turns out that he was drawing a quite frankly disturbing picture of their teacher. It was so disturbing that MJ could only shiver and dazedly stare at the whiteboard. What might have been a short time of dazzledly chanting, what the flip, as Peter Parker finished his weirdly disturbing picture was to the class, Literally the entire period. 
suddenly startled out of her daze, she turned back to the conversation, only to hear Miss Warren say, Miss Jones, you are being called to the teacher's lounge. Mr. Harrington has something to discuss with you. Nodding to notify her that she was going to head there after class, MJ started packing up. It's nearing time for the end of year field trip. Walking towards the lounge, MJ couldn't help but wonder where. Hopefully it wasn't going to be anywhere as disastrous as the last ones. She takes her back. This field trip was going to be disastrous. Where were they going? Where else? We are going to Stark Industries in two days. Passing out the consent forms, NDAs and other needed documents, she continued. Yes, yes, it's exciting or whatever. Quiet down. I am passing out the relevant documents that you need to pass tomorrow. Understood? The team nodded their understanding, but MJ wasn't satisfied. I don't think you heard me. Peter, you need to pass this tomorrow. Understand? The boy in question, Peter, was currently miserably staring out of the window. I don't think I do, Miss Jones. It seems I have another plan set up for the day after tomorrow. Terribly sorry. I have to go and watch over my spiders. Raising her eyebrow, she glared. Parker, if you don't go, I will personally kill your spiders. Do you want to test me? Instead of answering her question, Peter looked out of the window miserably. This is it, narrator. This is it. Parker, what the freak are you talking about? Staring right into her eyes, as if challenging her, Peter said, This is my villain origin story. After which he promptly stared out of the window again, not bothering to participate in the conversation. Behind him, Ned was mouthing to the other team. I'll take care of it. In the front of the room, MJ sighs, resigned. She was going to have to threaten the two relegant resident hooligans, wasn't she? Glaring at the ceiling, MJ couldn't help but curse Liz slightly. Why did she have to choose her to be the captain? She wasn't paid enough for this. Peter leaned on his locker, mournfully moaning. MJ, I don't want to go. Prolonging the last word, he started his tears of crying and anguish. Looking at them, Ned didn't know whether they were fake or not. Knowing Peter, they probably weren't fake. In response, MJ only stared Peter down coolly. You'd sooner divert a river from its course before I allow you out of this one, Parker. But, but I don't... Stop arguing. You would have to die before I excuse you. Suddenly collapsing to the floor, Peter muttered incoherently, staring into space, as if seeing a being only he could see. The lights fading. I see stars. He's singing gospel choirs, staring at his hands that were obviously starting to shake intentionally. He continued, my hands growing numb. This is it. It. Death. I welcome you. Unimpressed, MJ cuts into his tirade. Shut up, arsehole. We're literally in front of you. However, like every hero protagonist, Peter soldiered on knowing full well the risks of this move. Why does does the evil underlord look like MJ? I knew she was evil. Evil, Ned. Be fooled no longer. The truth shall prevail. Glaring, MJ pulled out her big guns. Are you going to go on this field trip, or should I ask Tony for permission? Jolting in fear, Peter hurriedly stood up and agreed. I'm going, I'm going. Who said I wasn't? Turning away, Peter stealthily swipes off the cold sweat on his brow. Phew, close call. Shivering in fear, Peter knew what, if Tony knew, he was going to raise hell. It was better to go quietly after all than have Tony be informed of his trip. That afternoon, Peter arrives at the tower nervously. Tony who had been waiting for this all afternoon, sits smugly on the sofa, coffee in hand. Hey, kiddo. How was school? Anything noteworthy happening? 
laughing nervously, Peter took off his jacket and shoes. Oh, no, nothing happened. You know, just the usual. Nothing interesting at all happened. Yeah, I, I need to go and greet Aunt May. Uh, bye. Patting himself on the back for his quick thinking of shutting down the conversation, Peter turns to the elevator to check up on May, completely missing the look on Tony's face, promising absolute chaos. Peter would never know what hit him. Sitting on the bus, Peter was so close to just jumping out of the window and hope for the best. For the past few minutes, Flash just would not leave him alone. Looking at Peter, who was rubbing circles on his forehead with irritation, Ned could practically feel the oncoming migraine. Poor thing. Hey, penis, you're excited to, to see your... Making quotation gestures. Workplace? Bet you aren't even employ. Completely irritated, MJ cut him off. Hey, Flash. Turning to MJ, Ned expected her to flip Flash off, but he was surprised. Instead of flipping him off, MJ held up her hand, making the universal gesture of short with her, forefinger, with her thumb and pointer finger. Nodding patronisingly, she said, You're giving off a lot of small dick energy right now. You have a crush on Peter or something? Looking at the horrified and angered face of Flash Thompson, MJ commits it to memory. Flash has never looked so offended. Yep. MJ didn't regret it one bit. It shut him up and was going into the sketchbook later tonight. Beside her, Ned couldn't help but sweat drop. As expected of MJ, a truly outstanding individual, meant for absolute greatness. Hey, penis! Look at Stark Industries! Take a good look, loser. You're not going to be able to see it again because of your lies. Fuck off, Flash. Surprised by Peter's cursing, Mr. Harrington turns to the two, nervous that the employees of SI might have a bad opinion of their school. Sternly, he said, Now, Mr. Parker, that type of language isn't encouraged in our school. He literally just called me penis, Mr. Harrington. What's your point? Sputtering, the teacher tried to salvage the situation, only to be interrupted by the arrival of their tour guide, an intern from the art department Peter was familiar with, Amanda Rodriguez. Smiling with her teeth bared, Amanda said, Good morning! You must be Midtown High. I'm Amanda Rodriguez. She gestured to her ID. She continued, She, her pronouns as observed on my ID, please. I will be your tour guide for today. Now, I must emphasise one of SI's most important main rules. We do not condone any type of bullying, whether that be from, quickly glancing at Flash, children, or biased adults. It was obviously showing that she had heard the words of Mr. Harrington. Sheepishly, the teacher turns red and moves to the back of the group, embarrassed. Nonchalantly observing, she continues. Now, I'll be handling out your IUD cards in a moment. These are just plain white ones, as you can see. These signify that you are all visitors. At the end of the tour, you will be returning these cards to me so that they can be reprogrammed for the next tour. No unnecessary waste, see? Walking towards the security, Amanda swipes her gold ID card. Amanda Rodriguez, art intern and tour guide, clearance level silver two, temporary platinum one. Welcome. Caught by surprise, the students, aside from Ned, MJ and Peter, jolt. This is the SI's main AI, Friday. She manages everything in the company. Do anything suspicious, she will know, and we will not hesitate to kick you out. Walking past security, she motions for the students to swipe their cards and enter too. Betty Brant, visitor, clearance level, lurker, welcome. Cindy Moon, visitor clearance, lurker, welcome. Abraham Attar, visitor, clearance level, lurker, welcome. As Friday continued to call out the names of the rest of the academic decathlon team, Betty couldn't help but wonder at the differences in levels of clearance and ID cards. Raising her hand, she asked Amanda, Excuse me, ma'am, what are the differences in clearance levels? Why is your ID gold? Nodding approvingly, Amanda answered, turning to the whole group so they could hear her answer as well. Nice catch, Miss Brant. If you notice, your ID cards are white, which signifies you are visitors. 
If you look behind you toward our security guards, their IDs are red, signifying they are part of security. There's none here, so you won't have to see it, but the press only get a black ID. Holding up her gold ID, she continued, Mine is gold, signifying I am an employee of SI. All employees have gold IDs labelled with their name, picture and pronouns only. If you heard Friday just now, then you'd have heard her say my t clearance is silver while yours is lurker. That's because SI has 10 clearance levels. The first is ghost, meant for the press. The second is yours, lurker, for visitors. The third is bronze, for family and friends of employees. Fourth is silver and has two sublevels, one for high school and two for college interns. Fifth is gold for intern labs and directors. Sixth or platinum has three levels for employees of different departments. Seventh, diamond, has two clear levels as well for floor directors and the board of directors or investors. Eighth is elite, which has two levels. The first for Stark Industry security details, PAs and other people that interact directly with the big bosses. The other is for close friends and family of the bosses. Ninth, or the gods, is for the new Avengers when visiting. And the last, the last is called Titan. They are exclusive to the big bosses. While Amanda was busy with her explanation, Flash was busy laughing at Peter, Ned and MJ. Hey, hey, losers, you weren't given IDs. Are you really that thick skinned that you're shameless enough to just push your way through? I know you aren't an employee of SI, Parker. Let's see if you're still so high and mighty now. Now, normally Peter would roll his eyes and let Flash get away with it. However, he was in Stark Industries at the moment. He was in his company. Letting the employees in SI see their CEO in training would allow a bully to get away with it would not look good. Here, he was not going to bend over. With a patronising nod, Peter takes his obviously gold ID card out of his front pocket and swipes it. Peter Barker, intern dictator, clearance level Titan. Welcome back, Peter. Are you heading to the intern labs? No, Fry. I'm here for a tour. Michelle Jones, visitor, clearance level elite. Welcome back, MJ. Ned Leeds, visitor, clearance level elite. Welcome back, Ned. Turning back to the frozen flash, Peter said with a sarcastic tone, Yeah, I totally agree. Who the flip said I'm an SI employee? God, what a dumbass. Turning to walk away, Peter sashays to the dumbfounded tour group, throwing out one last sentence. Might want to thaw yourself out, Flash. Stay frozen any longer and you'll miss the whole tour. Startled out of his shock, Flash hurried into the elevator, noticeably quiet. Quickly giving him a side eye, Amanda nods satisfied. <laughs> That's what he gets for trying to insult their baby boss. Initially, she was planning to consult with the main team on what she should do about it, but to her surprise, Peter dealt with it quickly and efficiently. As expected of the intern dictator and their CEO in training, when at SI, Peter Parker bows to no one. Making sure that everyone was in the elevator, Amanda calls out to Friday. Floor 18, please, Friday. Noted, Miss Rodriguez. Floor 18, our intern labs, please exercise proper lab etiquette. Now, our first stop for this tour is the our intern labs on floor 18. Right now, the interns over there are working on a new project on air pollution. As such, I hope everyone refrains from disturbing them and asking questions. We'll stay within the yellow lines that you'll see when you arrive. Don't get lost. If you have any questions, there will be a time for a Q&A later. Turning towards the door of the elevators, Amanda stops just in time to hear the ding of the elevator signifying their arrival. Floor 18, intern labs. Stepping in, the team looked around, mumbling explanations of awe. Peter understood. 
The first time he came in here, he was that amazed too. For a floor that was just an in-time lab, all the equipment was state-of-the-art and could easily be cleaned. However, Peter was already used to the site, so instead of joining in the tour that he already knew practically every detail of, he decided he would help out the other interns. Roaming around the room, Peter starts to look at the different prototypes of the interns, making comments along the way. Noting he wasn't around, Flash raised his hand. Why can Peter go there, but we can't? Turning to the stare at the kid she obviously despised, Amanda said coldly, Well, when you become the head of an all-intern heads and me manage all the interns at Stark Industries, let me know and I'll let you do that too. When the team continued on with the tour, Peter stayed back to help one of the interns. However, probably because he enjoyed himself so much, he lost track of time. Suddenly, Amanda gets his attention. He hears her mention they're going to the cafeteria for lunch. As such, Peter ambles over, apologising to the interns surrounding him and promising that he'll be back to check again later. Standing beside MJ, he, he asked her if he missed anything important. Shrugging, she said, not much. We just looked around, had a short Q&A at the end, Flash asked dumb questions as usual, and I got a lot of new material to draw, but that's about it. At the cafeteria, Peter orders his usual, the Spider-Man special, made by Tony when he found out that Peter liked to eat with the other employees down at the cafeteria when he was at work. It was four sandwiches, a pizza, three pieces of chicken and a side of mashed potatoes, two milkshakes and two burgers. It was a whole gig amount of food, usually ordered either by Spider-Man or Peter Parker or by an enthusiastic group of employees who planned to share. Happily collecting his order, Peter made his way to his usual table by the wall of the cafeteria with Ned and MJ. Peter doesn't notice, but the lady serving the dishes gives him a long glance. Everyone but Peter at Stark Industries low-key knew that Peter was Spider-Man. He was really bad at hiding secrets, after all. Everyone saw him stick onto the ceiling when one of his exper experiments blew up in shock. He had looked around him hurriedly, trying to see if anyone saw him. Coming to the conclusion no one had saw him, seen him, he continued on with his day. Everyone saw him. Luckily, everyone at SI adored Peter. They obviously wouldn't sell him out. They even signed an NDA about it. Beside him, next in line, Flash Thompson sees the order, massive order of food. Thinking that he was showing off, Flash decided to order the same thing. Peter Parker wasn't anything special, just a random kid in his school. If he could order it, so could Flash. Purposely walking by their table, Flash shows his obviously identical order and said, Yo, Parker, stop showing off. I know you won't finish that. Spider-Man special? Anyway, I'm going to finish mine right over there. Quit it, Flash, this isn't an airport. You don't have to announce your destination. We don't care, Ned said while chewing on his sandwich absentmindedly. Taken aback by the sudden dismissal, Flash opens his mouth to continue his tirade, only to be stopped by MJ's glare. Scared, he scurried back towards the table where his friends sat at. By the time an hour passed, Flash looked positively green, obviously sick from eating too much. Meanwhile, across the cafeteria, Peter happily finishes his food and gets up to order another meal, obviously still hungry. However, he was interrupted by Amanda's announcement. Attention, Midtown! Lunch ends in eight minutes, so please prepare yourselves and clean up. Done cleaning up and eating, the students converge in front of the elevator. Moving inside, Amanda asks Friday to go to the museum. Floor one, Stark Industries Museum. Finishing with her tasks, she turns to the students. Now, we are going to the museums of SI. In total, they span three floors. The first is the SI Museum, which showcases the evolution of SI throughout the years, from Howard Stark's era to Tony's and finally to Pepper Potts. The second is the Hall of Science, which we will visit last. Here, the most notable research and inventions of SI employees and scientists are displayed. The third is the Avengers Museum, which shows the story of the Avengers, which then evolved into the new Avengers. Hearing a ding, the elevator opens, revealing the face of Howard and Maria Stark. We are now in the first floor, SI Museum. You'll have 30 minutes to look around before we move to the Avengers floor. 
Look around and I'll call you back five minutes early. Dude, there's a Spider-Man display, Ned said excitedly, motioning for Peter and MJ to hurry. Seeing this, Peter groaned. He had confirmed with HR that the Spider-Man display wasn't ready for viewing when he had asked for the preparation for the trip last week. Why was it here? Upstairs, Tony and the intern heads, all busy with their various workloads, all sneezed simultaneously. They had expedited the construction to get it done in time for the tour. Let it be known that Peter's main team were full of little shoots. Knowing his team, Peter could only let out a resigned sigh. They probably made sure it was finished by now. Honestly. Quickly reading through the labels, MJ turned to Peter. It says you can talk to and control spiders. What? You do that? Huh? Leaning closer, Peter could make out the words. Has a habit of talking to spiders and asking them to do simple tasks. What? Turning to MJ, he said seriously. I cannot talk to spiders. We tested it and everything. Peter just put it there for shits and giggles. Tony did, at least. In brackets, he didn't. Walking down the Hall of Science, Betty's eyes couldn't help but pay attention to the small tags on various inventions and research that are displayed on the floor. Noticing one very familiar name, Cindy lets out a yelp, surprising the person beside her, Cindy. Grab, getting her attention, Betty whispered hurriedly, Cindy, Cindy, look at the tag! That says what I think it says, right? Leaning in close, Cindy curiously reads the tag. Medical Braces, 2018. Tony Stark, in collaboration with Peter Parker and Helen Cho. Cindy breathes out, all evident in her voice. No way! Peter made the medical braces that SI recently released? Turning to Betty, she said, words rushing out hurriedly. Peter Parker, I mean, all of us low-key knew he had an internship at SI, but... Getting her thought, Betty finished for her. He works with Tony Stark. Oh my God. So here's the thing. Peter Parker didn't like showing off. He was a low key kind of kid, you know. Everyone in Midtown knew that Peter Parker was going to be one of the greats someday. The kid was probably the only student they knew who could ace literally everything without studying. He won science fairs, spelling bees, academic decathlon competitions. The school needs an import to win an important competition? Call Peter Parker. Peter Parker was a gifted kid, but he never liked attention. It made him feel itchy, like there were ants crawling all over his body. That's why he made it a goal of his never to stand out. However, though Peter didn't like and try to get attention, he always acquired it somehow. There was something magnetic about him. As if screaming, he was meant to be someone. As if he was some unreachable, untouchable being. And in some way, he sort of was. Peter had his own little friend group, just Ned and MJ. Those three had their own world. They did everything together. And thought they were obviously thought, thought themselves as outcasts. The nerds of Midtown. They were looked to be untouchable. It made people envious. It was obvious that those three had a connection with each other. The type that could last a lifetime. No one could just slip into their dynamic. That's why everyone in Midtown was aware that Peter had an internship with at Stark Industries. Not because Peter went around to boast about it, but because Flash just couldn't leave him alone. Honestly, Flash could just fuck off. Still though, Cindy always believed that Peter really did have an internship at Stark Industries. She never thought, though, that he would work with flippin' Tony Stark? Good lord. Looking around more attentively, she noticed that there were more and more tags with his name on it. Water Purification System, 2018. William Graves, Harry Gray, Gil Burt. In collaboration with Peter Parker. Flexible Rescue and Construction Web, 2018. Peter Parker. Iron Spider Suit, 2018. 
Tony Stark in collaboration with Peter Parker. Cindy was speechless. Looking around, she saw more than half the research displayed in the museum that was published in the past two years had the words in collaboration with Peter Parker. There were more than four major inventions that Peter made or had contributed to. Holy shit! Turning to look back at the boy in question, Cindy couldn't help but think. She had thought Peter was going to be one of the great son of Sunday. She was wrong. Peter Parker was already one of the greats. Turning to her watch, Amanda checks the time. They should get going if they wanted the tour to the, to the other facilities and attend to the Q&A at the meeting sector later. Turning to the tour group, she calls out, Everyone, you have five minutes to wrap everything up. We need to get going to our next destination. Suddenly, her walkie-talkie crackles to life. Amanda listens to the message carefully, making sure to remember every detail. Moving to stand beside Peter, Amanda whispered, Peter, Mr. Stark and Miss Potts have to leave for an emergency in Hong Kong headquarters. They left you in charge. The intern heads are already taking over position. Making sure to school his expression, Peter nods minutely. There must have been a problem at the investors in Hong Kong. He vaguely remembers a conversation he and Papa had on the problems with their latest investment. Taking a deep breath, Peter calms himself down. This was fine. This was just like the usual. To Amanda, Peter asked, is there anything urgent I have to deal with? She answered, no, I don't, only to be cut off by Friday. Suddenly her voice rings through the museum. Mr Parker, protocol bastard has been activated. General Rowland had barged into reception demanding an audience. According to boss, you have full control of the situation and to do as you please. Nodding, Peter valiantly ignored the stares from his teammates. Send him to meeting room Omega on floor 68. I'll handle it. Turning to Amanda, he said, I'll leave this tour to you. Seeing her nod her consent, Peter moved to the elevator. Take me up to the meeting room, Fry. When the elevator doors close, the team suddenly startles out of their stupor. What just happened? Did Peter just... What? the clapping to regain their attention amanda smiles her pr smile mr parker has something to deal with so he won't be joining us for the tour instead we will be touring the various facilities of si before you leave ding the elevator doors open to reveal the meeting sector of the company topaz leading them across the floor amanda said we are currently on floor 68 we will have a Q&A session in one of the meeting rooms here to finish the tour. Walking along the hallway, the group was suddenly disturbed by the sound of a hand slapping a table. Turning to the side, they are greeted with the sight of one Peter Parker staring down a hulking man known as General Roland, the strictest military general in the US right now. Seeing their normally dorky classmates stare down one of the most influential and intimidating figures in US politics today, the team couldn't help but freeze and stare, shell-shocked at Peter Parker, who starts talking. Sighing, Peter cuts the man off. With a piercing stare, he said, General Roland. Stiffening, the general turns to the boy, who cut an intimidating figure. Let me make this clear. It is you who is asking for the favour, not us. May I may not be Tony Stark or Pepper Potts, but right now I am just as important as they are. Do not treat me as any less. Walking closer, Peter glared. I have told the military time and time again. Stark Industries is not and will not make any weapons for the use of war. My answer is the same as the one I gave two months ago. No, we will not donate or lend any Iron Man suits to the military. Putting his hand on the man's shoulder, Peter pushes him back onto his chair. I will not tolerate this disrespect to my company. It was you who barged into my company without warning. 
I have given you enough respect that I have tolerated your presence for the last ten minutes. Tilting his head to the side, Peter stands and moves to the door, opening it. Stark Industries is a major investor of government pro projects. As such, I have to assume that you, Mr. Rowland, represent the government. I can only assume that the government has no care for SI's say in this conversation. Do you really have no respect for our company? Knowing that he was in uncharted territory and may affect the government, the general hurriedly disagrees. He stutters out, N no, Mr. Parker, it is a... Cutting him short, Peter holds out a hand. Then, please do not put me in the position where I need to pull off all our funding. I would hate to have to announce that SI no longer supports the military. Opening the door, he continued, leave, General Holland. This will be the last time. Try to reach for something that is above you. Try to ask for something we have already denied again. Staring out and letting his vigilante persona take over, Peter turns to look at the shaking man. If you ever try to disrespect my company again, make sure you are able to survive the consequences. Walking out of the door, Peter hurriedly strolls towards the elevator, unaware of the stairs coming from a certain group of students on his back. End of this story. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this. That was a blast. I love it when Peter goes full mode. It's great. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. And make sure to follow me on Twitter as well. I really hope that you are enjoying what I do. I'm having a blast doing this. Have a good day, night, whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another story. Bye.